Hey guys, Mr. John here. In this video I'm gonna take, I'm gonna give you a look at this power supply in the enclosure now. As you might see, yes I did horrible job wiring the mains there. You can see a bit of yellow heat shrink with a fuse hidden in it. So not the proper way of doing it really but you can see that there are no few there are no heat sinks yet not on the primary side not on the secondary side heating for a secondary looks like this it will be it will be something like this as you can see wraps around the board utilizes pretty much all the empty space there is Heatsink for the primary is gonna be this L bracket that is gonna fix like that, drop right in. I ain't gonna touch it because the scene is connected right now. The switch is single pole, single throw, so I don't know the phasing of my outlet yet, and I don't wanna. It might be that the switch is on the neutral side right now, that's why I don't wanna touch it, but. Here I'm gonna go and take an iron with a bevel tip on it. As you can see, some of you made a comment about the thermal mass, and yes, indeed, these kind of cartridges have a quite little thermal mass. That's one of the reasons why they are so fast to heat up. First reason is obvious because it has more power 72 watts versus 48 watts on that one. But another reason is its lower thermal mass, but you, as you can see on this bevel tip, it is quite big. There is a nice patch there, where you can touch the workpiece and transfer heat into that, and there is quite a fat uh, cross-section from the heater to the actual surface there, so it's a pretty decent heat pipe. But not about that. I got a motherboard for parts and there I have a heatsink which hides MOSFETs under it. That bastard. Under this heatsink there are four presumably D2 pack packaged MOSFETs which I might reuse so first thing first I need to remove the heatsink to get, take a look at their markings. The heatsink is soldered in and it's this solder joint and this solder joint. It's not particularly heavy in copper here, but remember it's a heatsink on the other side, so it should pose a little bit of problem. And if not, I will go and try to desolder these kind of thingies, which are chokes that you saw on the other side. It's a dead giveaway because you can see three wires there. That's the chokes. So let me fix the phone and you will see how well this will cope with it. One thing I can't complain at all about these stations is how fast they are to heat up. I mean like... And that's it, it's ready to use. I'm gonna... The temperature right now is set... Uh, if it's set to 300 degrees, it is real 300 degrees pretty accurately, plus minus 5 degrees or so. But due to um, non-linearities and other stuff in the circuit, if I set it lower, it is actually not 260, but a little bit higher than that. The real temperature. And on the opposite side, if I'm gonna set it to 350, it is actually gonna be a little bit lower. And if I'm gonna set it to 400, it is going to be 360 real degrees measured right on the tip in the puddle of solder. 
So that's what we have set there. And the iron is ready for action. So let's do just that. Let's see how well this big thermal mass will cope with the heating there. Piece of cake. Really easy. Let me pull it on the other side. It's gonna be taken off in a breeze. There we go. Oh. And off it comes. And yes, I was right. There are four MOSFETs on this heatsink. As you can see from this bits of heating compound. It's a reasonable heatsink for a 1 or 2 to or 220s which don't dissipate all that much power. And the transistors. Yes, awesome. As you can see there, they are Oh, I do have some heating compounds there, so I m might as well use this trick where I smear a little bit on it and that makes it very easy to see what's written on it. I don't need to say it to you, you can see it with your own eyes. And yeah, now I'm gonna go and attempt to dissolve in these kind of chokes, which are much more severe. I'm gonna... Take this one because it has a large plane there and quite a lot of wheels in wheels. All right, let's see how that goes. 360 real degrees again. Seems like a lot, but those Metcal stations are running at the same temperature, honey. It's just the way it is. And that's per one of the reasons why they are so nice in desoldering big components. Not very smooth, but it gets the job done. I mean, this station, it is molten and I can pull it out. It is quite stubborn because of the friction fit of the leads. It's quite hard to make a nice thermal contact with this. I don't care about this board by the way, it's just a donor board. Here it is. It's quite hot. Mm, it is actually green and red. It's kind of interesting. Contains only four turns. F oh, wait. Five, excuse me. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, yeah, it's fine. And how do I remove these packages? I can remove them as well at 400 degrees on, with the soldering iron, but that's a bit finicky. It requires some mucking around, and although it can be done, it requires me bending the component leads quite a lot because I obviously can't heat up the all leads at the same time. So that is a bit bad. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, not now, I'm just telling you how I do it, that um, if I want to dissolve this kind of package I just go and tin the pads heavily with the leaded solder and then use hot air to remove that part. It is easier that way, quite a lot. I mean like I can easily remove this kind of D-pack package, not this D2-pack, bigger brother package um, with this kind of iron in the bevel tip. These kind of things are quite easy. These are quite pesky devices, especially if they are soldered to the big power plane. So that's that, a little demonstration. 
as you can see it works quite nice and why am I so speak why am I speaking so fast I don't know don't ask me I don't know all right so that's it for this installment I may cobble something else to this video we'll see Another scene I love about this power supply that I built into the station is it's very quiet, RF-wise. As you saw there, it has a common mode choke there, which you can see right there, in two not X-class rated capacitors there, which do a fantastic job. And the components are just fine. They're not very hot here at all. Surprisingly, the hottest components are the transformer and the choke. Because, frankly, they're the copper loss on those, on those magnetics are quite, is quite high, unfortunately. Anyway, so that's it.